Hi, my name is Katia and today I'm going to be talking about Unit 3 of the APCSA curriculum, Boolean Expressions and If Statements. So Booleans are really important to Java and they contribute a lot to the logic. So a Boolean value is either true or false, there's no in-between. These can be used, like the true and the false keywords can be used, but Boolean expressions can also be created using relational operators such as greater than, less than, equal to, not equal to, etc. So for example, if you have 10 apples, the statement, the amount of apples you have is greater than 5, is a true statement because 10 is greater than 5. These are then used in if statements. So an if statement is a way to conditionally execute a block of code. If an if statement is true, the block of code that follows will be executed. So for example, let's say we have a dog. If the dog is muddy, we would give the dog a bath. And that would be, the dog being muddy would be our condition, and in that if statement, the block of code would be giving the dog a bath. So then if the dog was not actually muddy, we would skip the block of code and we would skip the get bath and save ourselves some water. Java also uses else statements. So else is sort of the opposite of if. So if the expression in the if statement evaluates to false, then the else block of code is executed. So for example, let's say we have an animal and in this case, the animal is a dog. Our if statement checks if that animal is a cat, and if it is, it'll print meow. But since it's not a cat, we skip that block of code and go straight to the else statement, where we'll print out woof because it's not a cat. Java also has something called else if statements, and else if statements are used to check if another condition, if the first condition in the if statement is false. This is useful when you have different conditions that have different code blocks to be executed if they are true. So you kind of want to think of it as the otherwise conditional that allows us to account for all possible scenarios. So in this code implementation, if the variable hour is less than 12, we'll print out good morning. If it's between 12 and 6, we'll print out good afternoon. And if none of that is true, we'll print out good evening. So for the logic wise, you might have seen before I mentioned if it's between two certain numbers, this is called a compound Boolean expression. A compound Boolean expression checks multiple conditions at the same time, and an expression joined with the and and sign will evaluate to true only if both conditions are satisfied, and an expression with two conditions joined with the two lines will evaluate to true if at least one condition is met. So the two ampersands is, you can sort of think of it as an and, and the two lines you can sort of think of it as an or. In Java, the ands have more precedence over the or, so when you're coding it, if you have an and 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 an or in the same expression, you will look at the ands before you look at the ors. So evaluating the result of a Boolean expression depends on the order of the operators and the operands. Two Boolean expressions are equivalent if they evaluate to the same truth value for all possible values of their variables. For example, not in parentheses A and B is equivalent to not A or not B. This is called De Morgan's Law. It will distribute your negator across ampersands and ors and it'll negate them. So ands will be negated to ors and ors will be negated to ands and variables also get a negation in front of them. So when you compare objects, it's a little bit trickier because they're not primitive data types. So if you're comparing a name, so using strings, you need to do a specific dot equals. You have to use the dot equals method because if you're using the equals equals operator, you're not actually checking if the contents are the same, rather if their references are the same. So you can have two separate string objects, let's say two cats. There are two objects that point to two different cats. Even though the actual string themselves, the cats, aren't the same, if you use the equals equals operator, you will get a false because their references are not pointing to the same object. This is called an alias. So most um, object classes have equals methods allowing users to check if the strings are actually equal and not just the same string. So let's go over some chapter review. Question one, how would you describe A and and not, in parentheses, not B, or A. So will this value always be true? Will it always be false? Will it be true when B is false? Otherwise it will be false. Or it will be true when either is false? Otherwise it will be false. So let's look at it. If we distribute the negation, we get A and B and not A. So this gives us a little bit of an issue. You can't have A and not A both be true at the same time. And therefore, this condition will always evaluate to false, no matter what your A's and B's are, because A and and not A will always be false. That will never happen because true and and not true will always be false. Question two, what is printed when you run the following code? 
x equals 40. If x is greater than 20, print oranges, system.out.printout and apples. So since 40 is greater than 20, we will go to the if statement block of code and we will print both of them. So it'll print oranges and then apples and then a print line.